Hey everyone, Gary Simon here with a brand new tutorial. Today, we're gonna take a look at how to make a color font. Now, just a few months ago, I covered FontSelf, which is an extension that you can purchase for Illustrator uh, in Photoshop. Uh, right now, I'm at the, the purchase page, but as you can see, uh, it, it supports color fonts and even gradients in those, which is really awesome. So, I. Uh, Yes, it does cost money. However, I do have a affiliate link where you can purchase it and get some money off uh, in the description of the YouTube video. Um, and you know, it's not terribly expensive if you really want to make fonts. So it's like 49 bucks. It's a little bit cheaper if you go through my link. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I just really like the software and this topic. Um, and they make one for Photoshop. I have the Illustrator version as well here. Um, so just a few months ago though, if you're more interested in about how to make an actual font and something that's a little bit more elaborate of the tutorial, go to my YouTube channel here and just do a search for font and you'll see how to make a font, font design process. That was three months ago. And then also I did this cool time-lapse video where I designed a font. Um, and so I, if you if you have it and you wanna use it uh, and install it, uh, just follow along. Here is uh, the actual project we're going to do from scratch um, right here. I'm just gonna do two letters, A and C. And you can see that it does have a gradient here. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to actually get it into Font Self Maker and then export it as an actual font that could be installed on your system. And then I'm going to demonstrate, this is in Photoshop, um, that it is an actual font. As you can see, I called it a color font right there um, that you can use and edit. Awesome stuff. As you can see, it's also a type letter. All right. So I, if you're, you know, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel. And also for today's question, are you self-taught or are you going to school or a college for code slash design? All right. I'm kind of interested what my audience makeup is in terms of self-taught individuals versus those who are or are planning to go to a college to learn code and design. All right. Let's get started. All right, so over here at fontself.com, I first, if you want to purchase this and follow along and you want to make your own color font, um, click on the, there's a sponsored link. It's an affiliate link uh, that I'm going to put in the description of the YouTube video. Um, and that will give you, I think a few bucks off, like five bucks off or something like that. Um, but for pricing, you know, it's like 49 bucks, um, for either illustrator version or a Photoshop version. I have the illustrator version. Um, I think you do get a discount. Um, and I get $5 if you want to support the channel, whatever, you don't have to. Anyhow, um, once you download it and then install it, I, and, and the installation is very easy. I'm not going to cover that. Um, and you, you can access this window after you get a new document up or not. You don't even really have to have a document. Just go to um, Window Extensions and you'll see Font Self Maker 2.3.5 or whatever version. Um, so the way we, we begin, you don't just start with a, a blank doc document. Go to this little hamburger menu and click Font Template. All right, so this is the same process I covered in the other tutorial as well. Um, but except this time, we're going to make a uh, a color font. So right here, make sure you go to uh, layers, go to window layers, and make sure this is up. Um, good. I'm, my 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 mug is not uh, hiding that or covering this up. Fortunately, um, basically all your artwork is going to go in this layer right here. All your individual paths. Now I'm not going to make a full font. I'm just going to do two simple letters. Um, because obviously this isn't about that. If you want that, if you want more, um, you know, more of an in-depth tutorial, definitely check out um, my other tutorials on this. So I, at this point, you're just going to make the font like you normally would, um, whether it's a, a color font or not. So I'm going to, uh, let's see here. We're just going to use, actually, I'll use the pen tool. All right. And I'm kind of, I'm going to use this, this guide, this, this watermarked a kind of just as a very rough guide. So I'm just going to left click once with the pen tool, kind of eyeball it near the center and then come over here. All right, there we go. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so now with this general shape, I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to click on stroke right here. We're going to change the caps to rounded and also the corners to rounded. All right. So. You have nice round corners and all that good stuff now. Um, it's also a one-point stroke that is currently black. 
I'm not going to bother with the B. There's too much stuff going on there. Um, I want this to go a little bit quicker than that. Um, we're going to do the C. So I'm just going to come here near the middle and just hold Alt and scale out to the top and bottom guide that hopefully you can see. Um, yeah, that looks pretty. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Um, and I'm just going to make a, a real quick C shape, a cutout here by using the add anchor point tool. So just left click, drag out, choose that right there. And then we're gonna left click right here, left click right here to add an anchor point, and then come out here with the direct selection tool and delete that center point. And we have a very simple C and I, I'm good with this. I I'm, This isn't the actual font by the way, it could be, but it's not. Um, what I wanna do now is take this and convert it to outline so you can go to uh, object, path, and outline stroke. I believe the shortcut is control, control shift and O for that possibly. Um, actually, let me see. No, it's actually not. I forget what it was. I haven't used that in a while. All right. So now there it's 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 a it's an outline uh, path. It's an actual path and not a stroke that you can edit anymore. I want to kind of make it like an outline as we saw originally. So what we'll do is um let's see here by the way when you do that it creates a group we don't need that one in the middle so i'm just opening these up and deleting that one okay cool so now i'm going to give this a stroke i'm going to make it white though let's make both of them white first so the fill will be white and this white fill will be transparent uh, we'll get rid of it in a second but let's go ahead and give us a um a one point stroke and we're gonna click stroke properties and align it to the, the stroke to the outside. There, very simple. Um, all right, so this group, uh, I'm not gonna group it just yet, uh, just to make it a little bit more dynamic. For instance, we could make it a color font right now. Um, oh, by the way, let's go ahead and outline that the way we did before. So we take both of them, outline stroke. All right, so now they're, they're full paths. If I click it, you know, I can I can turn it into a gradient. You know, if I take the fill here and just choose one of these gradient presets. Um, let's get rid of that inner part real quick. There we go. It looks gray because of that uh, background back there. Let's go ahead and hide this stuff. <clears throat> and so this right here would be completely acceptable. Uh, you can actually take it further and make it look as if the, it, it, there's a, a blend mode being applied. Now you can't apply blend modes here in Adobe Illustrator, however, they're not supported with the color fonts. You kind of have to simulate the look. So what we'll do is I'm going to zoom up here. I kind of want to make it look like these are overlapping on top of each other. So I'm going to use the pen tool, left click right around here, come up to around there, come all the way around. I, I want to make the opacity zero just uh, for now. And then I'm just going to come up right around here where I think it might intersect and then join these up. And I'll just take the direct selection tool and move things up so that it looks like, you know, this is consistent with that line beneath it, the angle. All right, so we take this uh, this transparent, it doesn't have to be transparent, it is though. And uh, we'll take this and select it and also hold shift and select that. Go to Window Pathfinder. It's showing up on my other monitor, of course. And then we'll go ahead and choose Divide. Right, so when we do that, we just have to select these areas that um, that we don't need any longer. So now we have this thing going here. Uh, when you do that, it creates like a copy. So just delete it. And now we can change the color of this. All right, so I, I actually do not want to use this color overall. So just initially, I'm going to take everything here. Uh, we're going to change the fill once again oh I forgot to get rid of those too as well let me delete those from the inside all right so the, the fill I uh, let's come down to gradient options and that's way too many at color stops so I'm just gonna left click and drag them off and then um, I just want to I want to use a different color so um, kind of like a purplish and this one will be more of a pinkish. Yeah, something like that. Um, 
We'll take the direct selection tool so we can just select just both of these holding shift. Let me get this real close so you can see it. And this one's just gonna be a flat color. Um, right there, kind of that dark purple preset right there. Um, and then this one, we could change this up a bit. Um, we'll have it go from this light color to, to something else, a, a different type of hue, just to change it up a little bit. Yeah, like that, I think I like that. Now that looks pretty slick in my opinion. All right, so this one doesn't have naturally any type of areas that intersect each other, so we'll just make it, I don't know, this one. All right, and then we can hit the G key for the gradient and control the angle of that gradient however we wish. All right, so now we have our two uh, our two fonts, our two characters. If you were really to um, go all out and do every character, you'd be here for a long time. Um, but we'll just assume you're ready to go. What you need to do is, first we'll rename this. It's going to be our A and our capital C. All right. And then make sure they're grouped up necess you know, as necessary. And then we'll go back to our window extensions font self. And we'll take both. Now, I wonder if this is going to give, give me that issue again. Um, because of my screen recorder it wasn't allowing me to do this but I'm using something different though so we just simply just take both of these we'll drag them from the layers to this area right here see it's not allowing me to, to drag it because I'm recording the screen I'm gonna push it over to the other screen and then drop it real quickly yeah it's working now and there we go so I uh, now you can see you can start typing. It's only going to have A and C. So if I A B C or capital A B C, we see what we get. But that's fine. We can see that the letters we created are working. Um, so now we can actually export this. So I'm going to click on export, and we can give it a name. This is a name that you know it, people will be able to search through it through you know whether it's Photoshop or whatever. Um, we'll just call this. Um, AC font, AC color font. There we go. Hit OK. Save somewhere that you're going to remember. Open exported font. All right. And it's going to show this. And I'm just going to install it like any other font. All right. It's installed. All right. So now we can use it. So let's go see. Let's try Photoshop, for instance. All right, so I just have a new document here. It's 1920 by 1080. Um, I'm gonna type in um, real quick. I wanna change this. I was experimenting before I recorded this. So I'm just gonna choose Arial here. We'll choose AC, capital of course. Make this big for the big exciting reveal. <laughs> um, where are we at? Uh, a, a, there we go, right there. And it works. Completely editable font that you can use in your designs. And apparently, I haven't tried it, it also works uh, in Firefox and Chrome, I believe. Um, so yeah, there we go. Now, uh, let's say for instance, like what if you wanted to try to change the color? Would it work? No. Um, well, not, not in the, the standard way with the type tools. So for instance, we could see the color is gray, so you can't just change it to red and it's gonna somehow figure out how to change the color. You can change it, however, if we're talking about an app like Photoshop, uh, through different ways. So we can see we have our, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, it's almost covering it. There, now you can't see it, but you can see it's right next to my mug here, my head. If we double click on the right side of the layer, we'll get the layer styles. And right up here, um, we could do a color overlay. I mean, this is just one of many ways to change color. Um, and you, if you go to normal, it's gonna just completely color overlay whatever. So now you could change the color in that manner. Um, but if you change the blend modes and ex experiment with that, um, what I like to do is to select it, select it twice. It's outlined in blue. We can use the down air key on the keyboard to go through them to see if there's a cool, I don't know, some type of overlay that matches whatever we're trying to do. So this one will make it all red, but we could still see, you know, um, the different shades for vivid light. So we could change the color here and just uh, start experimenting. And depending on how 
uh, obviously with the vivid light blend mode, depending on uh, how much saturation we give it, uh, it, it will really change the appearance greatly. All right, cool stuff. I'm going to hit cancel though. There are other things you can do. You can do a gradient overlay on top of a gradient. Uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, create a, uh, a hole in the fabric of space time and all that. But if we change the blend mode, I mean, you could just, the, the possibilities are endless, obviously, in terms of customizing the color. All right, so that, my friends, is essentially it when it comes to creating color fonts. All right, guys, hopefully you found that useful. Make sure you subscribe here and also leave a comment, especially answering today's question, which is, are you self-taught or are you going to school or planning to go to a school of some sort to learn either code or design? Let me know. All right, see you guys soon.